Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside with me today. Today I would like to tackle the topic about something that I get asked a lot, and that's buying my first brand new compound bow. Touching on the used compound bow purchase is a little bit of a touchy subject. It's very regional and sales specific and who's on your local Craigslist and Facebook marketplace. I want to kind of skip that aside, but I will put links in applicable places to how to buy used compound bow and those kind of videos that I have already on the channel. But today I want to tackle buying a brand new compound bow right here in 2021. What three bows or at least manufacturers of bows that I would purchase based on different price points and price levels. A lot of this information isn't so much based on actual testing as much as it is as my job as a bow technician here in my local shop in Central PA. What bows we see come back for warranty repairs and what people keep buying and keep using. That's a big ticket sale when it comes to buying a brand new compound bow, whether it's a budget model or flagship. So I've broken it down to three different price categories, about 350 to 500 bucks, 550 to about 650, and then about 850 and up through the flagship. What I would personally keep my eye on and definitely when I go to my local shop to try them out if you can to definitely try these different bows out and you should always try every bow out because sometimes you find out that you know maybe you didn't like that mid price bow you like the budget bow better saves you a couple hundred bucks or maybe you wanted that budget bow but you tried it and you're just like this isn't for me you tried the flagship you're like oh I see what the flagship bow is all about and you go back home and you save for a couple more months or maybe a year and you're able to buy that one later down the road. So let's put the bow down here so I can talk with my hands like I do in every video. All right, so let's start off with the 350 to 500 price range. Now, a lot of these bows in this price range, whether you buy them from your local dealer or if you find them online, are gonna come as a package deal, ready to hunt, RTH as you'll see them a lot advertised. So that means they'll come with a standard sight, a standard stabilizer, wrist sling, probably come with a brush style rest, whisker biscuit or a three brush type of rest, and they're ready to go. Often they'll already have a peep installed, the D loop installed, all you gotta do is basically pull it out of the box, set it to your draw length a lot of the time, and just start shooting. Now, of course, if you follow the channel for any length of time, you know there's way more to a bow, whether it's the budget in or the flagship, than just pulling it out of the box and shooting it. You gotta get the peep height set. If you use a kisser button, draw length, poundage, all that sort of stuff. But if you're just gonna buy the bow, let's talk about that. The two bows that I don't ever really work on and I don't see a whole lot of complaints about, and in my opinion are the best in this price category, would be the Bear Species or the Species LD, which stands for long draw goes out to guys like me 31 32 inches and the PSE stinger or stinger max as they're calling it in 2021 both of these bows are single cam bows which makes them super simple to work on you don't have two cams with two modules it's just one cam one rotating module they're often numbered to the exact draw length so they'll tell you 25 26 27 which isn't often what you see for example here on this elite victory this is a module based cam you have to put it in a press change out the modules and the modules are just numbered one three four five so on and so forth and so those correlate to a different draw length and you don't know really what is what but single cam bows with everything already printed on the cam are very simple and very easy to work on quite often the manual that comes with the bow is very obvious it says you get six limb bolt turns or eight limb bolt turns for all the poundage range and that's another thing with these bows a lot of them have a very wide poundage range more so than usual flagship and mid-price bows of just 10 pounds some of them can go like eight to seven 70 pounds, which is great, which means you can get it for a young growing archer, or if you're on the older end of the spectrum and you need a more mild poundage, 35 to 50 pounds, or ultimately if you just want to keep growing with the bow and work all your way up from 8 to 70. If you have a wife or a girlfriend or a kiddo, or if you are the female in the relationship and you want to get your boyfriend or husband into the sport and you don't want to spend a lot of money and you want to have reasonable resale value and also ease of use, Diamond is the way to go, and particularly for for the women and the kids. They're very lightweight bows, definitely well under four pounds. So the mass weight of them and the shorter axle to axle is really nice. Plus also Diamond really knows how to target the kid crowd. They have a lot of different pink and reds and greens and blues and purple colored bows that really appeal to the kids, which you can get with the PSE, the Stinger, you can get some different colors as well, although they're not as readily available as they are with the Diamond. All right, so let's move up into the second band of price point, which is the 550 to like 650 
price point. A lot of these bows here you can get bare, uh, just the bow itself, or you can get into ready to hunt package. And most bow shops, myself included here at the shop I work at, they will sell it to you in a package deal for around that 600 to 650 mark. Quite frankly, I think if you're going to get a hunting bow and you want to get a high quality mid-price bow that's I feel is almost as good as a flagship, just has a few missing bells and whistles, then these are definitely the way to go. And that's the Elite Ember and the Bowtech Amplify or Divergent, depending on what your shop still has in stock. We'll start with the Bowtech. Now the Amplify is a 2021 model. The 2020 model was the Divergent. Your shops might have one or the other. Now I like the Divergent a little bit more. And the only reason being is that that cam went out to 31 inches of draw length, which is what I have. The new one, the Amplify only goes out to 30, which still covers most people. Both also offer a very wide range of poundage, you know, like 10 to 60, 10 to 70 pounds, as well as a wide draw length range, you know, in the low 20s to upper 20s, if not 30 or 31 with the Bowtech. They also offer a lot of the flagship level quality in terms of the limbs. For example, on the Ember, it actually uses the exact same limbs as they use on the 2021 Encore, Remedy, and the Cure. So that's some really high quality glass limbs on a mid-price bow. In in order to cut some costs so they're not quite the same as the flagship, for example, the Bowtech has uh, polymer limb pockets instead of machined aluminum limb pockets, which you would see on more expensive flagship level Bowtechs. Same thing's true with the Ember. You don't get like the set technology that Elite offers. It's actually a totally different cam system. It's a very highly adjustable cam system that actually has two dual yokes, which is very common. You'll see that on like the older diamonds. But the nice thing is in this price point, you leave the budget bow spongy back wall. And this is something that I really have a curse with with the spongy back walls of budget price bows. It seems to me, and don't tell Matthews, but Mission is the worst. They just have the worst back wall in the industry of the budget price bows. I feel the PSE Stinger and the Bear Species with their uh, single cam get a little bit firmer back wall, but both the Ember and the Amplified Divergent come with a limb stop, or the Ember actually has two limb stops. So it is a rock solid back wall on a highly adjustable bow, which is something if you've never shot a highly adjustable bow with a really spongy back wall before you'll know how terrible it is with a cable stop on a highly adjustable bow so having that limb stop is just that extra little touch that both elite and bowtech put in there that make them really good in this price point all right so last but not least is the flagship line now if you're going to go drop 850 bucks to 11 12 1300 on a flagship level bow don't take just my word for it please go down to your local shop or local shops if they're close enough and test drive every single one that you can get your hands on. I'm gonna name three that I personally work on and actually don't work on because the quality is so good. People don't really have issues with them, but if your area and you have the ability to go shoot PSE, Bowtech, Prime, Hoyt, Elite, Matthews, whatever you got, shoot them all. I don't care if it frustrates the techs, go shoot them all. If you come into the shop that I work at, I will hand you our Bowtechs, our Hoyts, our Matthews, our Elites. I will hand you whatever is on the wall so that way you can make an educated buying decision based on the bow that you want to shoot. And I say this true of your budget bows and mid-price ones too, but definitely your flagships. If you're gonna spend the money, go shoot them all. Don't make up your mind before you go. I mean, if you want to, sure, go ahead. But I strongly recommend you try them all out because you never know which one you're gonna like the most. Why do you think I own seven Elites now? It's not because I just really liked Elite, it's because I went and shot Elite for the first time in 2017 and found that I really like smooth draws and limb stops. And uh, well, I haven't looked back. So my top three for flagships are gonna be Elite, Matthews, and Bowtech, and really no in particular order. Obviously, I like Elite. There's a lot of good things to like with them. Cable stops, limb stops, rotating limb modules, set technology, tunable roller guard for fletching clearance. Huh. Well, I guess that's a lot to like, actually. I'm sorry, I had to. But there's a lot of different things to like about all the different flagship level bows. For example, Bowtech, I think is the best cable stop deadlock cam shifting dead in the hand bow that basically is made right now at least in my opinion it's got a nice rotating module on it really good fit and finish i love the grip on the bowtech it balances very well if you're into a cable stop bow that really enjoys the deadlock cam uh, shifting technology for the tuning i like binary cams i think they're really easy to work on then that would be the way to go now when it comes to pulling a bow out of the box and having it being vibe free absolutely 
dead, dead quiet, and just a really pleasant shooting experience, I would definitely go with the Matthews as well. A lot of different things that people like about flagship level bows. They'll follow their camp religiously, but if you really want to check out top three level bow manufacturers, I would definitely check out the Elites, the Botex, and the Matthews. Now, the Matthews still is a mod-specific cam, which does kind of suck in today's world. Everybody, Hoyt, Elite, Prime, uh, Bowtech have all gone with a rotating module, which makes it really easy for a shop technician, as well as for you at home to play around with draw length and so on and so forth. So that's kind of a bummer still. But outside of that, those three would be my top to definitely go and test drive if you can get your hands on them. I can hear all the people in the comments right now. Boo, you left out brand so-and-so. Listen, I'm just telling you, for, as somebody who deals, sells these bows, shoot, I sold two Bowtech amplifiers just this past weekend, working in the shop for the first time, and I couldn't tell you how many months. It's just really nice to sell high quality material from bow manufacturers that care, bow manufacturers that know how to make bows and support you, the customer on your end, as well as the shops at home. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions on anything that I mentioned or you have other input, leave a comment down below. Or if you have a specific question for me, hit me up on Facebook and Instagram at Average Jack Archer. Or even send me an email at AverageJackArchery at gmail.com. Hope you're able to get outside. Enjoy the sport of archery. Archery hunting if you so choose definitely enjoy God's beautiful summertime creation and we'll get to see you next time.